Good morning, this is Angela with Park Rose Permaculture. I had gotten several requests to update y'all on how our turkey raising experiment is going here in our permaculture garden. So let's take a look at how things are going for us and our flock right now. Okay, I'm coming down to pick mulberries, got my container, and I wanted to show you our updated poultry situation. So we had to harvest this gate that was previously here under this rose for another part of the garden. So this morning, my husband built this very quickly out of scrap wood. You can see old, the blue painted wood is stuff that used to be on this shed that we took out of the middle here. And then pallet wood, which is obviously free, and then scrap bits of fencing that were left over from other projects. And then for the closure, he just uses scrap wood. It's really easy. We just have to keep poultry out, right? So it's very, very simple. Didn't have to buy hinges, just use wire for hinges. That way they're easy, they're movable. Cheap, and by cheap I mean 100% free. So I've got my step stool. Ooh, I'm getting caught in a rose. I grab my step stool here. So we've moved the poultry into this part of the paddock. So as I've said in the past, we do a three paddock rotational system. And I try to avoid putting the poultry in here this time of year for this reason. My fall gold raspberries are flowering and starting to set fruit. And last year I let them in here and they ate most of them. But we've kind of had a crisis point the last few days. So let me walk out here a little bit more into the sunshine and show you. Hello everybody. Hi. They're finding all kinds of good weeds and bugs in here because it's been fallow. Nothing's been going on here and they've been kicked out for a while. So if we look all the way across the veggie garden to the far side of my yard, let me put my step stool down here in my bucket. You can see this is the trellis that I have pumpkins growing on this year. You can see the beehive through there and then you can see the fence. The turkeys were jumping onto the beehive and over the fence and they were going for my neighbor's yard. You can see Ben's garage here. The other day they were on top of Ben's garage. This morning they were in Ben's backyard. Now we raised them as chicks in Ben's yard, in his garage. And my turkeys really like him and his daughter. And so they here Ben or his family outside and they want to go where they are. And it's been a pretty consistent problem. Sometimes they would just sit up on the fence and watch them playing basketball in their driveway and stuff. And sometimes they would jump into their yard or into the driveway in between our properties. So it was time to close off that area for a while while we figure out what we're doing and let them hang out in here. There's plenty of shade as you can see here under the Concord Freight. Plenty of sunshine, plenty of old chop and drop, plenty of weeds, bugs, all kinds of good stuff in here. Hello. So I do have to say, even with their wings clipped, they are really agile and they can get up very high. They could probably get up on top of this arch, no problem. And usually they're content with something like that. They feel safe up high, particularly in the evening. They've been getting on top of the arbor where the hops are on the other side of the run. And they've been getting up on top of the duck house, on top of this shed over here and just chilling out. So I'm realizing turkeys may not be ideal for a smaller garden because they want to be up high and they're inquisitive and they want to explore and they want to be where people are. So when they hear people, they wanna go and hang out with you. Incredibly social. You can hear the little noises they're making. They make such sweet, docile, quiet, gentle noises. They're not loud like chickens and ducks. They're very quiet. Their noises are really peaceful. But boy, they're big and boy, they can really, really get around. Okie doke, I just finished picking mulberries up on a ladder, as you can see. This is about how many I'm getting every day this time of year. So still getting over a gallon of mulberries 
every single week. It is definitely going to keep us through the winter for baking, jam making, and my kids often enjoy them just straight out of the freezer with some heavy cream on top and maybe some um, shortcakes as well. Just realizing how absolutely filthy I am. That is why I put a black shirt on when I pick mulberries. So since the mulberries are down here next to the chicken coop and I'm doing an update on our poultry, I thought I would just take a couple of minutes to explain the, you know, the pluses and the minuses so far in raising turkeys on a quarter acre property in the city. So we have had ducks and chickens for well over a decade. Um, that's gone very well for us, except for bra bra, my stupid loud, loud, loud duck this year. But we've never done turkeys before and I knew that they would be different. I had gotten some advice that they really like to roost in trees and that the older they get, the more resentful they get of going inside a coop at night. But I live in the city and they're not actually at full size yet. And so I'm really worried about predation by raccoons. I know that my ducks are safe in their house. My chickens are safe in their coop at night. I know the turkeys want to stay roosting in a tree or on top of my hops arbor. I just don't feel that that is safe for them yet. They maybe need to get a little bit bigger and I might consider letting them sleep outside. But at the moment, our evening routine looks like this. I come down, I dump out all of the ducks buckets of water and uh, Ruth or my husband helped me refill them for the morning and we lock everybody up. The ducks know to go into their coop. I double check there's no eggs I've missed during the day. The chickens go into their coop. The turkeys are up on top of the hops arbor or up on top of the shed and it becomes a tenuous game of trying to catch them when they're above my head and they're getting very large and grabbing them and basically stuffing them in the coop. They don't wanna go in. They don't like to be enclosed on all sides. They have pretty sharp nails now. Now they're very, very gentle. They don't try to peck. They don't hurt you in any way on purpose, but their nails are quite sharp. So that is obviously not a sustainable pattern. I can't catch turkeys and foist them um, on the, the chickens inside the coop where they're ticked about being in there and um, nobody's happy. So we need to come up with a solution. The other problem that we're having is that they keep jumping the fence into Ben's yard next door. I don't know what to do about that. It's not a negative in many respects that turkeys are incredibly social and gentle, inquisitive and affectionate. Both of our turkeys love to be held, love to be scritched under the wings, love to be rubbed on top of their head, love to snuggle in your armpit or in your lap or up under your chin. Um, they really love to preen your hair. They love to get their um, faces up under the back of your hair and just spend a lot of time preening your hair. Very, very affectionate birds in a way that um, none of our chickens and ducks have been thus far. I love chickens and ducks. We've had some chickens that are basically like puppy dogs. None of them are like turkeys but also turkeys are quite large and they have their own opinions about what they wanna do. And so I'm not sure what we will think of this in the long term, whether we want to raise turkeys again, but so far it's a really enjoyable process and we're learning a lot. I need to be able to keep them from escaping my yard. I need to figure out a safe place for them to roost at night as they continue to get larger and are absolutely rejecting going into the coop. They're not noisy. As I said before, they make sweet little quiet noises that are just really, I mean, they're really precious. They make lovely vocalizations. So far, now the male is not sexually mature, so I have not found that they're a problem in with our ducks and chickens. That may become an issue here in the next m couple of months as he becomes sexually mature. And so that may lead us very quickly into what we wanna do with them um, in terms of whether they're going into the freezer or not. But that's our update so far. French Fry and Leggy Blonde are both doing very well here, very happy. They love my kids. Um, they are just a wonderful addition. So interesting. It's so interesting to hear and experience and observe the ways that turkeys are very different from ducks and chickens. It's been a wonderful experiment. I'm really glad that Ruth suggested, insisted that we try raising turkeys because it's been a really educational um, and enjoyable process so far. So that's my turkey update for today. I'm going to go wash my hands and throw some mulberries into the freezer and I'll be back very soon. Thanks.